In the Bible, Paul explains that everyone has two bodies, a physical body and a spiritual body. Mediums use their spiritual bodies when they act as a communication bridge between the physical and spirit worlds. As a spirit speaks, mediums hear the information using the ears of their spiritual bodies, then repeat the information to other physical people. Mediumship is synonymous with the biblical term, gifts of the spirit. The focus of our show, Making Known the Unknown, is to provide knowledge through the use of Reverend Hewitt's mediumship and Sidney Schwartz's research. The Bible contains the history of psychic events, along with man-made doctrines created by priests centuries ago. This show will explore the untruths which the Bible entrenched into our society. By uncovering these untruths, we encourage people everywhere to think for themselves with a critical mind. Hello, and welcome to Making Known the Unknown. I'm your host, Tina Tarek, and with me today are my guests, Sidney Schwartz, middle school teacher from Hackensack, New Jersey. Yes, folks, he comes all the way up to Connecticut from New Jersey to do this. This is a dedicated man, and a Bible researcher of some 25 plus years. Welcome, Sidney. Thank you, Tina. And Reverend Carl Hewitt, local person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some of you may be familiar with him. He is pastor and founder of Gifts of the Spirit Church in Chesterfield, Connecticut, and Carl is also a medium, making this a very unique combination of resources to put together a show. Welcome, Carl. Thank you. And welcome to all of our viewers. Happy New Year. It's a new year. Some new topics, some things we think you'll find exciting, new information, and today's show is going to be titled Spirit in the Media. What does that mean? That means that we're going to go through a list of movies, TV programs, and give you a sense of how spirit is working a theme or a thread through all of these. And Carl and Sydney, I'm hoping, will share with you where maybe some of these movies or television shows miss the mark or miscommunicate, or maybe some of them are closer to the truth than you think. But before we dive into that, Carl would like to share something with our viewing audience. Carl. Thank you, Tina. Well, this goes out there to the <clears throat> viewing audience, and I've been told as of the last 48 hours that Jesus and his ascended masters were all behind these programs for the three of us to do. This is why so many things have been falling into place because the world was in such a mess prior to Jesus coming there uh, here two th over 2,000 years ago, and the world is in a mess today, and they're doing everything possible to educate the people, such as these pictures through precipitated art and everything else. And he was the one that told me that he was married and he had a wife and two children, of which you people can look at this beautiful painting back here. It's not finished, but there is a lady in the area that is uh, or was a nun for 27 years, and she just up and started painting because there are two great masters that lived many years ago, and they are in the world of spirit, they're ascended masters, and they've been working with her hands to paint. Her paintings are out of this world. And uh, that is not quite finished because the picture, the part of Jesus, he, he appears uh, he appears there as the uh, etheric, in an etheric body. But she didn't have it done, and I was so excited about it, I said, I've got to have that for the set, for these two tapings today. And I want you people to understand that we're not running just a show, we're not getting paid for any of this. We're doing this because they want us to. It is, it, they are behind all of this. They're behind the work he's doing, they're behind the work that, Tina's doing and the work that I'm doing. So I welcome you to watch this because I would suggest you put a tape, uh, a blank tape in your machine right now and tape this because there are many people waiting in the future for you to teach them what you will learn here. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Carl. That was a very heavy statement. Do you realize how hard it would be for people 
to conceive of it, never mind mm. understand Very that Jesus so. and Ascended Masters are working with us. Very much so. Who are we? Mm. Are we some special people? No. Have we done anything phenomenal to earn this? Are we saints? Let me just mention something here. Mm. I've had three or four people say to me, my God, if, if, if he appeared to me as he appeared to you and the pictures appeared at the seances, you know, I would feel better than anybody else. It's not, hasn't changed me one bit. I'm still the same person. I can never change. The only thing is I woke up when he proved who it was that was talking to me and communicating with me. And he says, I want the people to know the truth because I said once before, know ye the truth and the truth will set you free. I've been set free. I have a knowingness system, people. I don't have a belief system anymore. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to make a note about this, this um, painting here. I don't know if we can focus on it again, but you had mentioned something that may even be difficult for people to conceive as well, that this is Jesus' wife and children. His wife was, uh, was um, Mary, what was her name? Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, that was his wife. Okay. And the little, uh, the little girl was, uh, was the first child, and the girl's name is Sarah, and the little boy's name's James. My goodness. And the boy was named after one of his brothers, James, the one that had the first church in Jerusalem. Really? This is going to shock a lot of people out there that think that he was never married. He was married, very happily married, too. And the woman who painted this? The woman who painted him is in the area. She mm -hmm. was a nun for 27 years. And Spirit told me that she would get in touch with me during the time that these pictures are being broadcast. And when <clears throat> they said she was lucky to be let out of the penitentiary. Oh, now, I'm, I'm, I am, uh, I'm quoting exactly what they said. Mm. That what she was in was in a penitentiary. Mm. I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting her and spending some time with her. Fabulous person. And, and her art is, is phenomenal. And how she does this is phenomenal. And this piece is just finished. Mm. This is fresh. Yes. Wow. We are very lucky to have that. Very mm. much so. Uh, from the books that I've been reading and been, been hearing about from some friends of mine who are reading books about Mary Magdalene, she was considered the first apostle. And she and Peter had, were having major confrontations because Peter was so anti-women and she was, she was um, probably the lead apostle. And so there was friction be between the two of them. And obviously, eventually, Peter went out and that's why women weren't included in t into any of the church things. But uh, from what I understand, and this is why this whole mythology that she was a prostitute and things. Other, book, other sources have said that, that Mary Magdalene was a priestess from, um, from Isis. Isis was one, one of the gods of, of, um, in Egypt, and that, so she, that she had all this psychic knowledge being a pre priestess be, uh, in, in that religion, and that she, when she saw Jesus, she, she recognized that he was a prophet medium. And that, uh, and that she began working with, with him. And, th and this is why she was, she was one, of, one of his followers, and eventually they got married. Well, the, spirit, the Ascended Masters have informed me and reminded me many times that she was the very first uh, pope in the Catholic, in, uh, at Vatican. You know how many women would really like to hear something like that? And how that would validate that there was a place at some point for women in history with respect to, I don't want to say organized religion, but, but spirituality and, and becoming a leader. Uh, and yet it's, it's, it's um, very well hidden. I, I found quotes that in the early church between, you know, before the year 325 with the Council of Nicaea where they changed everything, that in Cappadocia, which is a part of Turkey, Carol and I visited there, that women used to serve the Eucharist. And they used to have a veil between, between the people and, and where that would take place. Um, and, but women were definitely in charge. They were, they were, um, were deaconesses, that's what they were called. Um, so they, they definitely had roles in the churches of, of officiating. Uh, but again, that was all changed because again, they were, they, the uh, church fathers were, were, uh, became very focused on trying to abolish mediumship and get mediumship out of the church. And since women are so more, much more psychically gifted than, than men, they could easily slip into a trance and contradict all the newly, freshly made dogmas that the men created that were false. The spirit the masters wanted no part of it. So that's why they had to silence the women. And that's when they, they had Jerome uh, rewrite the Bible and insert all, all these things about silencing women. Women can't be teachers of men and so forth. Wow. 
Now, Sydney, you spend considerable amount of time every week and every day researching all of this. Yes. So you're not just sitting here spouting this off because you read it in one book or you stayed in one area and one library. You've been around the world and you've made a lifetime so far of, of gathering this information so that our viewers can know this. Yes. Very interesting. Thank you. Um, I think we'll start on uh, discussion about spirit in the media. I don't know who wants to start first, but what I thought I would do format-wise is I would throw the name of a movie or a TV show out. And then, um, and some of these may have not been released yet, so they're, these are in various stages. Some may have been 20 years old. Um, and sort of have the two of you go back and forth with your perspectives, both uh, spiritually and uh, biblically. Um, what, what they are trying to say to our viewers, what they're not quite saying to the, to the viewers. Um, and with that, I think I'm going to throw out the Gospel of John. There's a, a tough one. Who wants to start with that? Well, uh, <laughs> n neither one of us have seen the movie, so it's going to be a little bit hard to comment. From what I understand, they, they, took, they took the, the Bible um, translation and have gone with it as accurately as they could to, to film this movie. Um, and again, I haven't really had a chance to, chance to see it. I can't wait to see it because I want to see, <clears throat> I want to see if they really touch the truth because as I've said so many times to audiences, Jesus gave a reading, the same kind of a reading that you would get if you came to my office. He gave the woman at the well a reading. And in most of the Bibles, it spells it out because she gets so excited that she even forgets that he's got her water pot in his hands because he's already told her that uh, the man that she's living with is not her husband. She's already lived with four others and she'd married none of them. And uh, she ran back home and she was telling everybody she could see, come to the well and listen to the prophet. He's told me everything I ever did. Well, there are some people that get pushed out of shape when I compare his work and my work because there's been mediums down through the ages. They, they, they've been labeled so many times, different labels. For instance, the kings in those days would have somebody, they were called soothsayers because a lot of times what was said to the king was soothing to him, right. soothsayer. Right. So I want to see if they really put that in that picture, in that film properly. If is, they didn't, they're lying. Now, isn't the Gospel of John supposed to be exactly based on what's in the, the Bible? The yeah. Bible, yeah. yes, yeah. Be, from John. It'll be interesting to see how they handle um, the Jesus changing the water into wine, because yes. Carl was in trance once and gave that story explicitly to how he lined up the the jars and how he walked through and 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 raised the vibration, the frequency of the water into the frequency of wine, and did that all mentally. It'll be interesting to see how they portray that. Mm. It's done with the mind, mm. yes. Now, the bigger question I have, and maybe some of our viewers have, from having watched many of these programs, is that uh, they're taking it out of a Bible, the story of John, but if there are multiple Bibles, many of them have been changed, what are they really basing this on? Yeah, well, you know, that's a very good point, because it, the story that uh, Jesus with the adulteress, where he, he stoops down on the ground and uses automatic writing and writes a message up and, and, and stands up and say, ye without, sin, ye without sin be the first one to cast a stone. Um, that's not in all the Bibles. There, there are Bibles that I've, that I've typed out because typed out I collect those verses where that just doesn't exist because it was in some manuscripts but not in others. And it's depending what manuscript they're using to translate from whether the story appears or not. So it'll be interesting to see if it's in the movie depending on which, you know, because in some manuscripts that's not there. Well, you know, if their focus is to, to, to convey what really happened, and they themselves don't even have a firm foundation to understand that the Bible has been changed and there's many versions of it, then, then what is the point of having a movie? The Ascended <laughs> Masters that have been talking to me have told me so many, many times that we have been, all of us have been taught and trained in mind control. Don't ask, you understand? Don't ask, don't ask questions. It's a mystery of the church or it's a mystery of God. Don't ask. So people don't ask these questions. They don't ask, why isn't it in that Bible? It's in that Bible, it's not in that Bible. See, people are afraid to ask. They think that bolt of lightning is gonna come down and hit them. Well, you know what, Carl? We ask questions and I ask questions and I've yet to see a bolt of lightning. So, I, I, you know, I'm hoping our viewers will be encouraged because we do ask the questions and we're not afraid. 
even if we don't like the answers. Let me Still say, get an answer. Let me say this much <laughs> okay. again because there's some, there's some new uh, uh, viewers for this tape. And we're born with two bodies. We're born with a physical body that we see in the mirror. We're born with a spirit body that we do not see. We have two minds. We have the conscious mind and we have the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is the mind of the God body or the spirit body. And the conscious mind goes with the physical body, you see? So when you are asleep, the subconscious mind can really go out into the other kingdom and have experiences with somebody that's already passed on. And somebody in your neighborhood that you know, maybe a friend of yours, you find them in the dream. They're in the dream with you. It's because their body is shut down, their physical body is shut down, their spiritual body is outside of the body in this other kingdom. This is why you're visited with somebody that's already passed and somebody that is alive down the street from you, perhaps. This is the way it works. And we have to have these dreams because it's all part of life. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll move on to another movie, The Passion, which evidently has been delayed a few times from being released. And I think I put down on the note here, released February 24th, 05. Mm -hmm. But I think it might be this year. I'm not quite sure no, if it's, I missed it. No, it's this year. It is, it is yeah, going to be this year. It's supposed to be, uh, be released on Ash Wednesday Okay. Uh, this year. And this is depicting the true story of the Stations of the Cross before Jesus was, you know, people say crucified, but I'm going to say murdered because really that's what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was tortured <laughs> okay. and then he was murdered. Okay, tortured and then murdered. What are your thoughts on that, Sid? Well, I think it's going to be a very interesting movie because from what I understand, it's, it's not in English. It's going to be in Aramaic and, and, and uh, Hebrew and the languages that were spoken at the time. So the audience is more or less are going to be put into a time capsule or like H.G. Wells' time machine and really kind of go back and, to what it really looked like because they're, they're not messing around. I mean, it's pretty gruesome to, from, from the, the pictures that I've seen. They're really going to see what, what it was like. Now, why Mel Gibson was inspired to do this, I, I can't say, but may, maybe it's to get people to, to really think about the whole, that whole story. Hmm. Mel Gibson was influenced to do this movie, and that's why he did it regardless of what the church said. He mm -hmm. did it. And he was even influenced as to who, who to pick to do the acting part. Really? Oh, yes. So, I didn't mention this earlier when okay. I said, was talking right. about the two dimensions, but. Uh, the world is in a mess right now. It's worse now, really, than it was back there because there's more population here on the planet. And the more fanatical religions. And more fanatical religions, absolutely. So uh, I understand Mel Gibson is a pretty religious person. Very yes. religious. So he was influenced to put this out there. And by putting this out there, it simply brings up the discussion about all of this, yeah. perhaps. It doesn't necessarily mean that he's putting it out there so that people will create yet one more belief uh, about a particular religion or a particular thing that happened that may or may not be true. Do you know what I mean by that? I know very well what you mean by that. I am only wondering if at some time in the future or before too long from now, and if he won't admit to somebody on a talk show that making the movie and what happened to him in the times of making the movie caused him to stop and think differently. Really? Because he's a very, very mm. uh, fanatical person. Mm. So sometimes we have to go through these processes That's right. for us to unlearn and to see maybe what's underneath Absolutely. all of that dogma right. and that ignorance. That's right. So this is his work yeah. to work through this and for himself perhaps mm -hmm. and by sharing it with the rest of the world. But of course, when it's put out there, you know that every particular religious sect is going <laughs> to interpret this you know, to, to their understanding. And so everyone will look at this probably entirely differently. But I guess the bigger picture is that it's being put out there, that people yes. are discussing it, and they're showing the graphic nature yes, of it, yes. that it's not some beautifying, beautiful process mm -hmm. that happened here. It was actually torturous. Um, okay, all right. Um, this is a movie that I haven't seen, uh, or I don't remember it if I have seen it, and it's called The Resurrection. <laughs> and we're going through all throughout time here, folks, so we're jumping all over the place, and, and I'm interested to see what you well, think. I was down visiting my mother <clears throat> back in the 70s, and uh, I had, my mother lived about halfway between Wilmington, North Carolina, and Myrtle Beach. And so to bring uh, some of those, um, uh, those uh, fly traps, what do you Venus, call it? Venus, fly Venus fly traps. Venus fly traps back to the children of the church, you know, 
and because I, around here you don't see those things. And uh, I had uh, taken a ride south, about a mile, two miles south of my, where my mother lived, and uh, I had gotten a container of those things in one of those trays you take the oil out of a car. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was on my way back to the house. I was going to put some more water in them, and then I was going to go over to Wilmington. There was a movie in Wilmington, which was north of there. And when I went out to the main highway to turn left and go north, I couldn't turn the wheel. The wheel actually turned to the right. So there was somebody there with me. And I didn't get in an argument with anybody, but they just turned the wheels and I went and I was complaining because this is Sunday afternoon and at Myrtle Beach in the summertime, you know, it's a parking lot. And so I wound up going to Myrtle Beach complaining all the way because I didn't want to go that way. I wanted to go towards Wilmington. And so as I was going down, there was this theater cinema that was, it had three screens and it was sort of at an angle. And as I was approaching it, I saw this light appeared all the way around the, the building, and I knew there was, the spirit was trying to get my attention. And I looked in that first marquee to the left, it says resurrection. This other movie said something else, the other movie, but that, all that word says resurrection. It didn't say anything about the actors or what it was about. So I pulled into the parking lot, because I knew that that light flashing around there was spirit light. And I pulled into the parking lot, and I went up to the, you know, to the booth there, and I asked her, I said, uh, what's this movie about? And she says, I don't know, sir. Um, it, it just started yesterday, uh, two days ago. And uh, I felt I had to go see it. I said, well, when does it start over again? And she says, in about, about an hour from now. And so I took my bicycle out of the van, and I took a ride and came back, and parked the bike again in the van and went up, bought a ticket, went inside, bought some candy bars and a big, big, big Dr. Pepper. And I sat down and when the picture started, I thought, this is a porno picture because it showed two people in bed. I need to interrupt you. Okay, first, okay. first of all, there's, there's two things. <clears throat> when he talked about spirit light being, being around, around yeah, the marquee, right. okay, that's the same kind of light that Moses saw as the burning bush. Yes. It was the same, same type same, of thing. Same but, thing. But you left out the phenomena that happened to you before you went into the theater. What was that? All that stuff that came out of the sky. Oh, God, that was important. That's right. Here I am standing outside here, hmm. getting ready to buy the ticket, asking her questions, and this stuff started coming down as if somebody's on the roof throwing it down, and it looked like the size of mothballs. These balls were white, and they were bouncing all over the place. Nothing was hitting me. It was just bouncing all over the place. So she pressed a button, and the ushers came outside. The manager came outside. They ran way out in the parking lot to look up on the roof to see if there's anybody up there. Right. And of course, there's nobody up there. And like they were all over the place, all around me. And a few minutes later, they just they didn't dissolve like uh, if, as if it was ice. Right, right. They just didn't dissolve, they just disappeared completely. And these guys were talking about this, you know, what was this and how did it happen and blah, blah, blah. And uh, so I went inside and watched this and it turned out to be the real true story of a woman in California that was a medium, but she did not funnel her gift into healing until in the latter part of her life. Oh. And so it's an excellent movie for someone to see and understand how she became the healer, but she went through hell because there's a, there was a religious fanatic in that movie that was always with the Bible and you know it's the work of the Satan and all of this right. garbage. Right. And again, for the viewers watching this tape, there is no such thing. I asked the great master, I asked him to explain to me is there a devil? They said, no, it was created by the church. Is there a hell? No, that was created too. There's no such thing. He said, the moment that your heart stops, the moment your heart stops, it gives birth to the spirit body and you go right on. And he said, but you're in a different body. You're in a body of energy. And he says, your body only looks about 30 years old, never older than that. Since and he says, you're in paradise. Since we're talking about spirit in the media, I was watching the Hollywood Squares the other night. Yeah. <clears throat> they had a question on there um, about what, what is 856 degrees Fahrenheit. 
And the answer was hell, as it's calculated in the Bible. And I was shocked when I heard that. Are you kidding me? No, no I don't know where that where that is, where that is, but that's they they somehow figured that out. So uh, since this, this doesn't exist, it's a pretty pretty good uh, you know. I was like really shocked when I heard that. Well, three hundred Bibles. <laughs> Maybe one of them has that in it. it could They're be. making up what they want, That's so right. why not? In, in the movie, Res in the movie Resurrection, they show um, this one scene, which is quite interesting. Uh, apparently, a whole group of doctors came, came in. They're like in a theater, and she's on, uh, almost on stage, and she's doing this healing of, of this particular person who I don't remember what the disease they had. But she put her, she actually put her hands around the person and leaned the person, in, you know, around. She was hovered around them, mm -hmm. and she, in, in the, her healing, she actually absorbed the illness from her. Mm -hmm. She became ill, and then she used that energy. Mm -hmm. uh, some healers work that way, not all do, but some actually take do that. They take on, they they, they withdraw the illness from the body. They experience it, and then they, they dissipate it. And they, they showed that all on film, which was, was, was quite accurate for that type of he healer. Wow. I saw that happen in a movie recently that took place in Egypt. Oh, and I can't think of the title. Um, and the, the town, uh, who was in it? Brandon Fraser. And the town name was hu Humanoptera, which was based on uh, some mythology of the Book of the Dead mm -hmm. and um, the plague and how some, some healing like that happened in the movie where uh, the sickness was absorbed and then expelled. But uh, anyhow, it just made me think of that. Thank you. So Carl, you wanted to share something. I don't know where this belongs here or not, but they're just telling me right now to remind us, because I've never done this before. Mm -hmm. They said that when Vesuvius, is that the name of that yes. mm -hmm. Vesuvius yeah. blew its top in 79. Yeah. This is where the writers got the idea that hell was down there. Oh. And when it blew its top and all of those uh, 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 people died, all of those parts of the fire the was coming out, you know, yeah. brimstone and all of that. Right. It was coming out and how it took, how it killed all of those people in that little town. Mm. Well, they sent me there. I went there one time uh, to uh, Pompeii. Right. Uh, to check this out. And when I was there, I had an experience. They took me back in time as they did in the, at the Nicaea and experienced this. They said, this is where they got the idea. Don't forget that was 79 mm -hmm. and yeah. Nicaea was 325. That would have yeah. made sense. Okay. And they got the idea that hell is down there and that uh, after a while, it gets too crowded by sinners. <laughs> it blows its top. Oh, really? What a bunch of garbage. Very interesting. There's a few mm -hmm. other words I'd like to use here, but I won't dare. Well, if you think about it, it's very childlike in the way the yeah. logic is put together. Mm -hmm. I mean, a two or three year old child could look at that and come up with that explanation. I had and, a lady come to know. me not too long ago and she sat and cried because she didn't feel good and she thought she was going to die because she's quite elderly. And she went, didn't want to die and go to hell. And I talked to her, I talked to her for a long time. I've talked to her since then on the phone and everything else. And to get that out of her mind, there is no such place. It was created by the church right. to frighten the people. Can you imagine? And they just, not, uh, they just uh, mentioned to me, why don't you tell them about Vesuvius? Very interesting. Mm. And that's where they got the idea. Isn't that something? It really is. So add that along with that place in, um, was it Turkey? where they were too poor to bury the people in mass graves. Yeah. So right. outside of the city limits. Oh, you're talking about Geh Gehenna, that's outside of Jerusalem. Yeah. yeah. The and hell then, regions. Right, yes. the hell right. regions. Right. Plus hell now regions. we've got the lava combined with that. Mm -hmm. Makes yeah. a nice story, doesn't it? Sure it does. The but hell it's regions, not real. The hell regions <laughs> was where uh, the, uh, the bodies were burned, just like they do today in, in India. They cast the bodies in the fire and burn really? them. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So the resurrection was about a medium who didn't acknowledge her gifts. That's right. She was be being uh, mm -hmm. smothered by religion. Right. Yeah. And then towards the end of the movie, she realized her, right. her ability yes. to heal. Isn't her that father something? was terrible in that movie and uh, everybody else, even a, the boyfriend that she was going to. Not too far off from some of the things you've run into oh, in this God, lifetime, yes. Carl, sounds yes. like. All these phenomenal things. I mean, I was already awed by you driving towards the movie theater and not being able to turn one way with the wheel and the light over the theater, never mind the white stuff falling from the sky. I mean, we are going to, at some point in the future, put together a show of all these extraordinary mm -hmm. experiences right. that, that you've both shared together. 
and, and it really is unbelievable, and you've had plenty of witnesses. So this wasn't done in a, in a vacuum or only with the two of you present. Many people <laughs> have been around to see right. this, and I sit here and wonder when you share this from years ago, where are these people now? How did they explain away all the things that they've seen and experienced when they've been around the two of you? But that, that's another show. Yes. Well, you talk about movies. You take the movie uh, uh, Encounters of the Third Kind. Mm -hmm. Well, what was it, Spielberg? Yes, yeah, Spielberg. Spielberg was influenced by the masters in the other dimension. Really? Because those spaceships that came to this, to this planet, this is how they fly. They fly on a highway of light. They do not burn fossil fuel, and they're real. But they, they, know how to, they know how to speed up the vibration of their machines to become absolutely invisible. And uh, they can fly as fast as, uh, probably as fast as light, I'm assuming. And they told me that that was a, that was a real experience, that he was influenced at that time. Mm. And that was in 1977, if I'm not mistaken. In 1977, there's another great master that came to this world. I've talked to you people about it and used a medium's <coughs> body mm -hmm. to, to teach the world. And they tried to, they tried to assassinate her uh, several times, but their great master has protected her. Mm -hmm. That entity has gone back. He's went back to his kingdom, which is the 23rd universe. Don't ask me where that is. I have no idea. So, so you're saying that Close Encounters, when Spielberg was influenced, he was influenced, right. was more about um, the real thing. The real thing than anything yes. else, really. In, in that movie, Richard Dreyfuss' his character, he, he sees a vision of, of the tower where, where they're going to land. Yeah. And, and it's like so, so many times Carl has the same type of experience. He gets the information and doesn't know what, he, what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And he just became obsessed with drawing that picture over and over and over again because he had no other right. way of dealing with it or trying to figure out what it meant. And finally he, he, finally he was able to figure out that he should go to that place, that place at a certain time. But that, that, that phenomena was so, was so accurate, so true, because the, the, he was clairvoyantly seeing that picture of that, of that, uh, mm -hmm. that formation, Devil's Tower. Hmm. You know, you were talking about something that, that seemed um, sort of scary to me, and I was thinking about the movie Poltergeist, and, and you were talking about the devil and the hellish regions mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And when I saw the movie Poltergeist, it really scared me. I didn't like that, and I wondered if... Um, that really had done more damage than good with conveying the message that people in the spirit world are spooky, demonic, scary, harmful, you know, and, and, and basically no good. They're, they're spooky and demonic if you don't understand the phenomena. Mm. And when, I, when I saw that movie, I mean, I was, I was just awed by what I was witnessing. Mm. And I remember when it was over with, I, I was coming out and there was this teenage girl or someone in her early 20s, and she said this to her friend, I didn't understand a bit of that movie. And I sat there and I understood it all because I had, I had been educated in psychic science. I knew this phenomena from the Bible. When all of a sudden they started to see these keys and all this stuff falls from, from the, you know, out of the sky on the ground, that was the gift of A-ports. Mm -hmm. just, just, like, just like Jesus multiplied the fish and the loaves. It was the same gift. So to me, I understood what I was seeing. It wasn't this mysterious thing. But yes, the people who don't understand, understand psychic science could be misled by it, I suppose. But my thought was that the focus of this movie was to scare people. Was I, I didn't get this as something enlightening and loving and, and beautiful. There's a slush fund. I don't know who's behind it, but I can tell you, many religions are behind the, the slush fund. There's some corporation out there somewhere that's behind this, and the money is fed to them. And they funnel the money to have movies like that made to keep the fear going with the people. But on really? The, but on the other hand, what the message of the movie was pretty powerful. It was Be powerful if you understand, my friend. Yeah, but don't forget, they, those people built a house on Indians' graves, right. okay? Right. That's what caused all that phenomena, mm -hmm. okay? And right. we know of other cases where the same thing has happened, oh, where, they sure. where, they <laughs> where they built a house on an Indian grave, and all of a sudden there's all sorts of poltergeist activity right. going around. Right. Now, if they respected the graves, mm -hmm. that stuff wouldn't happen. Okay. So it's because they're violating, you know, so the laws of psychic phenomena that uh, this stuff is, is being Right, but up. most people, uh, you know, I think it just served to frighten them, period. And anything and everything to do with anybody in the spirit world, you know, scary, spooky, it demonic. Is to f it is to you know? put fear in their minds about the afterlife. Mm. Uh, you know, anybody that's passed on. Mm. You know, if the viewer is watching this program, if you want to find some 
evil beings or devilish people, go on the streets of America. You'll find them, you know. And the, I tell you one thing, there is no such thing as hell. There's many different dimensions in the other, in the other uh, world, many dimensions. And if you're a good person, you're going to go where other good people go. There are no bad people there. They go where other bad people go. Get rid of that other garbage. And uh, if you're a good person and you're loving and caring, you're going to be joined by others. You'll go there automatically. You don't have to have a badge. You do not have to have a ticket to go there. And then no church is going to do it either. Talking about the good and the bad, there's a movie that's right in our faces, that's been there for many generations, and they keep coming back for more, and that's Star Wars. Star mm -hmm. Wars, yeah. I, I really, really enjoy Star Wars. And I really like the examples of don't give over to the, give your energy over to the dark side. And I'm wondering what the two of you have thought about that. Well, uh, you know, it's quite interesting. When I saw the first movie, obviously when they say the force be with you, I understood that that was the, the spirit world. And spirit is, it was, they were really saying spirit be with you. And, and I, so I, I was seeing certain phenomena in there. But it wasn't until the second movie that I, that I had an explosion while I was watching it. Because... Um, in the second movie, they, they talk about the planet Endor. And that really struck me because of, of, of the Zephaniah and the Witch of Endor that we speak about in the Bible. And so my, my immediate reaction was, I wonder if Endor was a place that, that Steven Spielberg knew about. Why did he use this word? You know? I went, the first thing I did was when I went back to school on Monday, I went into my library and I took out the, the most powerful atlas I had and looked in the, into the back to see where Endor is on the earth. Mm -hmm. And it's in one place, it's, it's, in, it's in Israel. So it wasn't like his favorite town that he went to camp in or something like right. that. He chose that word deliberately as a clue. Spirit gave it and to that's when all of a sudden I realized that this, this, this uh, trilogy is not just about psychic phenomena, it's also between the conflict with the pre between the priest and, the, and religion. Because if you look, look there, the, the, pers the, head, the top person on the dark side was wearing black, the next group was wearing red like the cardinals do, and the, and the average army was, was wearing white, which was the flip of the way, uh, way the church is set up. Because the church, the pope wears white, the cardinals wear red, and the peace wear black. So they were doing this, this, this whole thing about the, that we write about in my first encounter with an angel, the conflict between the priests and the mediums, was, that's what that trilogy was all about. And it was, uh, this whole, the whole trilogy was about how mediumship versus organized religion and how that plays out, and how organized religion was a totalitarian force that wanted to control people's minds to think certain way, to do certain things. It was all laid out right in front of you in an in, in allegory, in, in, a, in a story form. So I, I, I wow. was just blown away by it. And the key that opened that up was Endor, was the word Endor. I heard Endor too, and I thought the same thing, but I didn't, I never looked at it that way about the hierarchy of the priests and the colors and mm -hmm. how they dress. Do you think Spielberg understands, Carl? that he was influenced in what's going on here? I know he, he does. was. He I does. Know he was. So it's like he's getting his message <coughs> across in a, a way not to offend organized religion, but also to convey a powerful message. Yes. Hmm. The Ascended Masters told me that he was influenced to do the movie just as Tina Tarek, Sidney Schwartz, and Carl Hewitt were influenced to do this program. Hmm. Three years ago, I would have never dreamed that we'd be sitting in front of cameras doing a program like this, and we're going on now two years, right? Yes, we are. Almost yes, we two are. years. Yeah. And the word has got out there in places that I never dreamed it would. And a lot of people have called me and they said, you've caused us to think differently than we ever thought before. Well, that's, uh, that's what we're trying to do, get people to think. Because the great master told me, remind the people that they, they are born with a brain, they're born with a mind, use it. Because very few people on the planet is using their mind to think for themselves. They allow other people to do it for them. This is the message that they want up okay. there. That's definitely the easier path yeah. to allow someone to think for you. And they explained to me that there are two paths. There's the path of God and there's the path of humanity. And when Jesus got very angry because his students did not understand what he was teaching, and they kept saying, well, Master, you are the, you are the, uh, uh, the one that creates all the miracles. You're the miracle maker. And anyway, what they did, uh, what they did is, um, 
what he did. He got, he made up his mind one night after he went into the Garden of Gethsemane and he told them to go on because he would always do his meditation by himself. And so he meditated that night and some of the great masters that were still over there, his spirit control, which was Moses, and his spirit teacher, which was Elijah. Yeah. Moses had already been dead 1,400 years, Elijah 800 years. So they were telling him, tomorrow, why don't you demonstrate to the, your students and get them to understand the two paths. You have been following the path of God by creating the miracles, mm -hmm. but not once have you created or have you demonstrated the path of humanity. So the next day, he turned over the, the change makers tables and money was flying everywhere and he was swearing at them and he was very, very angry. And so when he went back to the upper room that evening and the boys finally caught up with him and it was Thomas that says, Master, you made an ass of yourself today. What was the, what was the reason for it? He said, I am sick and tired of being with you guys because you're not understanding a thing I said. I've been telling you about two paths to follow, the path of God or the path of humanity. And he says, today I demonstrated the path of humanity. That's when I raised hell with those people. It's a good lesson, wasn't it, for yeah, them? It is. That is a good lesson. Definitely the easier path, though just to let it fly. Mm -hmm. And the harder path requires more work. It That's really true. does. Requires you to look at yourself, the critical mind, and you may not like what you're seeing, but you have to own it and know it. That's right. Yep. And go forward with it. What about the sixth sense? What did you think about that movie with Bruce Willis? The sixth sense? <clears throat> the young man who played the little boy. Yeah, that, it was a very interesting movie because it was following the, the laws, of, the principles of psychic science all the way through until the very end when you realized that they were both on the on the other side, and it was it was it was a little bit different than when, what you thought. I hadn't seen that. I, I hadn't anticipated that coming. That took me by surprise. Yeah. But but the phenomena they showed was quite accurate. So Carl, your experience with being in the other dimension or seeing spirit, because it it turned out that that whole movie was really in the other dimension, did that ring true to you? Absolutely. Okay. This is a big, heavy statement, and I'm not saying it to be boasting or bragging to the viewers of this, uh, this program, but I have been to the other dimension. I've been there. They took me there several times to prove it to me because I'm a very stubborn person because I, I, I never, I would not accept this gift for a long, long time just like the car that I showed you mm -hmm. came through the mail yesterday. Mm. Well, uh, for so many years, I wouldn't accept it. I said, I don't want any part of it. Let me live my life here. I don't want any part of it. And I spent so many years searching to find the truth. And the more I learned, the more I found out I had to learn, you see. So we live when, after this body is no more. We live. We continue living. I don't care how bad the person is out uh, there. They still live, but they live in their, they live with their own kind. If that person is a real bastard, that's where he goes to a dimension where there's nothing but bastards there, mm. you know, real bad people. Mm. So Hitler is at some dimension where other uh, dictators are, you mm. see, and they become the mirror image of each other. And sometime, if we want to use time off into the future, if they desire to be better or to do good, and somebody comes along and helps them. You might call them an angel if you want to. Mm -hmm. Well, there's some people out there on the planet right now in the physical body that I would uh, label as an angel. Really? Sure. There's some good people on the planet. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to do the next show on angels. Oh, that's get into that too. in detail, too, so I'm looking forward to that. I didn't mean to, to jump ahead of you. Okay. <laughs> but that woman who was in the movie who was slowly poisoning her daughter, I think it, the, it's called Munchausen syndrome by proxy, mm -hmm. the daughter who was sick but not really sick the mother made her sick so the mother could satisfy her own need of being able to take care of somebody you're talking about a movie now i'm talking about the sixth sense in the oh, sixth yeah. sense that she did that you mentioned hitler so i was thinking that somebody who was nasty like that in that movie when she dies are going to be with other people who are yes. nasty yeah. like De that too yeah. definitely very interesting mm. um okay i'm going to jump over to ghosts uh, my favorite that movie, movie was very ghost. very romantic very sweet 
and um, psychically accurate to really? the nth degree. Yes, okay. To the nth degree. It, it started off with, with the, uh, like I think the character's name was Sam when he got killed and he went, he went to the other side and his reaction was just the way Carl describes it where he looked at his body. He said, that looks like me and he went and tried to put his hand through it and his hand went right through the physical body right because, it. because his hand now was a body of energy right. and the, right. so the energy would go right through the physical and then it, it showed him be going, going towards the light, but he wasn't finished yet. He had things that he wanted to take care right. of. So he went through the whole rest of the movie is trying to, to get things uh, prepared for him to actually go, go into the higher frequencies. Right. But um, when he, he started to go back and he went, wanted to see his wife because he was so much in love with her and he was trying to project to her. And, 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 but she, wasn't, she didn't have the gift of clairaudience. And then the Whoopi Goldberg character came in and she was the medium and she was able to, to, to do this. But there was so much of it when it continued on and, and then he, he learned that if he, that if he concentrated and lowered his frequency down, he was able to move physical objects, which is telekinesis. He was able to levitate that penny Okay, Why, by by lowering his frequency into into a more physical uh, paradigm, he mm -hmm. was able to to do that and move it across, which is exactly the way the way the way spirit would do it. Mm -hmm. But it, would it takes a lot of psychic energy in order for that to happen. There had to be a medium present. Right. And the Whoopi Goldberg scene where she she goes becomes a trans medium, and this this big man comes in and kind of slams into her body. That's the gift of trance. That's exactly what A1 does to, to, to him when he comes to speak to me. Mm. He slams, he goes into Carl's body mm. and starts manipulating the voice box. That's exactly what trance would look like if a person was clairvoyant and could see it happen. Okay, I'm not, but that, but, but that's the way it is. So so much of that movie was, was accurate. Even at the ending, when the when the uh, when his friend who betrayed him died, and you see this black stuff coming coming to get him. Right. Okay, they were showing they were showing the lower lower level of spirits, which are denser and darker, ah, but coming not the devil. to get him. Not, not the, the devil. devil. But people will <clears throat> think that. But go ahead. But yeah. but but it was trying. The only way they could show the darker the darker negative spirits coming because that's where he was going to. He wasn't going to the, to the higher vibrations where Sam was. Right. Okay. So yeah. so much. What what's of psychic science was portrayed accurately in that movie that it, it's it's a tremendous teaching tool. Mm. It was beautifully put together. It was very yes. nice. The only other thought that I had was that this whole notion of people going towards the light. And I know we've talked about this in other shows. And, and in fact the light is one level to go to, but you really want to go beyond that. Go yes. beyond that. Okay. So See, that's still there. There are seven levels in the other world. You know, we're living right now, we're in Hurtisan level, which is number one, and then the second one above this is infrared, the third one is visible light, and everybody says you go to the light, that's right. a mistake. Okay. You go beyond the light, the next vibration uh, is ultraviolet, okay. and there the body, the soul, the mind, everything is healed mm -hmm. so that you can go on to the other dimensions. And the last one, seventh one, is called the Godhead. Now that doesn't mean that there's an old man sitting there with a book and he's waiting for you to kick you in the, your butt if you didn't do the right thing. Godhead means absolute knowingness. Absolute knowingness. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. The uh, the infrared le level that's beyond visible light appears darker than than the visible light does, yeah. and in the Bible it talks about and God was in the darkness. It's in there twice. It's right after. It's right. It's in Exodus chapter twenty twenty when they talk about uh, when they talk about the, after the Ten Commandments, and then again in, at, at the temple they said God is in the darkness, and that's what they meant by that. It's, it's, that's where the heal, all the healing takes place, but it appears darker than than visible light it does. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm also wondering if a lot of people after seeing this movie would really like to understand or believe or know that their loved ones may be just that close and around them in spirit all the time and maybe they have a heightened awareness now. I'm mm -hmm. glad you mentioned that, Tina, because I want the people that's watching this program to know that when spirit, if a spirit, your relatives, friends, loved ones in the other dimension, and if they want to come and see you, they do not have to open the door to walk in because their body is a body of energy and they come right through the wall. That's hard uh, for a lot of people to understand. It's like, for instance, if, if, if I took this little radio and I turned it on, I wouldn't have to go open the doors or windows for the signal, the music to come in. It comes through the walls. Mm -hmm. Well, when we go into the other world, our body is spirit, so therefore we do not have to have the door open. So 
if you hear a door creaking or think it's going to open, I mean, don't be stupid enough uh, to think that a ghost is coming to visit you. They got more things to do. Well, but, but precisely. On, on the other hand, when my grandmother came to, to visit us in Camp Chesterfield, she waited for someone to open the door because she didn't know she could walk through the she door. She didn't know she could She walk. didn't have the, that knowledge. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the person's knowledge base because you, right. you specifically said that. Right. She, she didn't know she could walk through the door. She waited right. for somebody to open it, a physical but, person to open it. But, but exactly that notion that if you hear a door or see a door creaking and moving, that you associate that with someone in the spirit world coming to visit you. Where does that come from? It comes from all of these movies. It comes from television. It comes from ignorance. Mm -hmm. It comes from ignorance. That's the right yes. word right there. Yes. Ignorance. So and superstition that, 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 uh, that's been perpetrated for centuries. Right. And it, it's so funny because you don't even have to think about it. It's already in your mind, mm -hmm. so deeply seated, actually in your soul, that that's what's going on and it's really not. Right. It's really not. Okay. And that was another reason why we're doing this show today. Mm -hmm. So you could really get what, what's real, what's not real, who's trying to do what, who's not. Um, the stigmata. That scared me. That movie really scared me. Yeah, that was a... Do you think that was their intent? Uh, I'm, not sure. I'm not quite sure. Um, personally, I don't understand the whole, that whole concept of the stigmata. I know religious people are supposed to have this as some sort of sign, that, right. a, a religious sign, but... Well, I don't quite understand This it. young lady in the movie was not religious, as far as I right. got. And then she's showing these signs, which really confused the religious world, and a priest who seemed to hover over her. Um, and then, you know, it, just, it was just very scary. Well, weren't they also talking about statues crying and bleeding and things like that? Yes, yes. And uh, for, the Spirit has told you things about that, right? Yeah, Carl, you could share yes, something. Yes, very much so. Because I wanted, that was one of my questions, God, about 20 years ago, I wanted to ask that question because at that time there was a lot of things in papers and magazines, you know, that this statue was crying and that statue yeah. was crying. So I wanted to know. Right. And they said that the world has been led into deep, deep, dark ignorance so much in religion that the statues of certain people are crying. They're crying because they feel sorry for us that the religions have misled us. They have changed everything that, say, Jesus stood for and a lot of the others. They've changed everything he stood for. So, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that would look down. I'm, I'm talking about people that wear a collar. I'm right. talking about people that are high in the church. They don't want people to know anything about mediumship. And they'll say, that's the work of the devil. See, there is no such thing as the devil. And when a person has that in their mind, it's the work of the devil, guess what kind of people they draw to them? They magnetize to them. The very negative people that we would really call devils. Oh, I see. Absolutely. Right. That makes sense. Now, so the signs of, the, 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 uh, I should say, the statues that have been recorded all over the world as to crying or having yeah. things come out of them are real. You're actually saying that's real. Those are real tears and real blood. Mm. And is Absolutely. there any significance with the, the stigmata in general? Trying to get a message to us. Okay. So if the, sig the, the signs appear on a real person, uh, as far as the, uh, the stigmata in relation to uh, Jesus' crucifixion, what significance do you think that has? Okay. Any this is what they've told me. Mm. Any time that a person's hands bleed, it only proves to that person and others that uh, God that uh, Jesus is with us. Okay. Didn't you witness that one time? Yes, yes. It, okay. it went, there was a time in Hawaii that we'll be talking about, that show you were good. talking about, okay, that good. Carl had stigmata. So as opposed to the movie, it's, it's, yes. it's a good thing. Okay. okay. I want you to, I, I, I just thought of this. I want you to tell the viewers at the time that we, went, we took a helicopter ride and we wanted to go down into the valley where there was some ancient healing mm -hmm. uh, temples down there. Right. And tell them the story. Well, we, before that, we had put together a production called The Golden Thread, and on, on this TV show, we, show, we showed the final, the final episode of that where um, we, we used the Hallelujah Chorus as a, as a backdrop and did, showed all the different gifts of the Spirit mm -hmm. on, on the screen. It was a quite elaborate production for, with the slides. It was easier on video. But um, so we both associate the Hallelujah Chorus with the gifts of the Spirit. We were in, a, in this helicopter ride. Uh, we were taking a, a scenic tour of, of the island of Kauai. We had, we had headphones on 
because of the chopper makes a lot of noise and the pilot could talk to us. And when he wasn't explaining what we were seeing, there was music going on. And as we were approaching this one place, which was supposed to have been the, the healing, the, the highest healing site at, at that, uh, on that island with the Kahunas, it was called the Fern, Fern Grotto, a hallelujah chorus came on. And he was at one side of the, of, of the helicopter. I was on the other. There was a couple between us. There was four of us sitting right. across there. And I looked out and turned to him. He did the same thing because we both heard it. We both heard the same music because we were just flabbergasted that we were hearing we were hearing that piece of music at the at place where time. psychic phenomena was taking place. Unbelievable. Okay. So we got we you know we we finished it. We finished the tour and we stopped and we asked the guy what. Um, what music were you playing? And he said, oh, it's a, it's a classical thing called Hooked on Phonics. He said, we, well, we really enjoyed the Hallelujah Chorus part of it. And he looked like, there was no Hallelujah Chorus on that. Really? And I bought the, <laughs> I bought the album, and there is no Hallelujah Chorus <laughs> on that. So we were hearing music that definitely wasn't coming from the audio machine. Very interesting. So again, symbols outside of <laughs> yes. what you're doing, just like the stigmata, right? showing the presence. That's, that's really something. I think that's going to be a two-part show <laughs> of all these extraordinary experiences. Yeah, yes. um, I don't know how much we have uh, time for. Uh, signs, we've touched upon signs when we've talked about the crop circle show. Yes. That, My disappointment with that was that this priest went back to the church in the end and aliens were portrayed as evil and bad. Yes. Unfortunately. Really However, the crop circles were real. Yes. So we got some truth out of mm -hmm. that, right? Right. Um, touched by an angel. That's a popular show that's on. I find it a little too sappy for me. A, little a, lot, too a lot of people say, say that. Puritanical. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they're still trying to go in that direction. Yes. Joan of Arcadia. Big disappointment. How close is that to Joan of Arc? Well, they, it, it wasn't supposed to be cl that close. It was supposed to be a little bit of it. They touch on psychic phenomena every now and then and drop it. They drop the truth. They don't understand what they're talking about because they start a message and then they, they, don't, they don't carry it through. So to me, that's a it's a disappointing show. Okay, wow. I we guess you noticed. Excuse me. Oops, he wanted me to see that when it was on last night. Yeah, right. he didn't even see. And uh, I looked at it for about ten minutes. I didn't even say good night. I headed for my <laughs> bedroom and I went to bed. That was boring. Yeah. I saw it last night. I was a little disappointed. I thought they would enter into some other area, but mm, they, didn't. they didn't. So I don't know what the issue was there. I want to uh, <clears throat> let our new viewers know that we're about to wrap up. And I want to thank uh, Sydney and Carl, as usual, for opening people's minds, sharing their research and information. I want to thank our viewers for tuning into this program. I want to remind them that you can still get this book by calling 443-3201. The book will be sent to you first. You can pay for it afterwards. My First Encounter with an Angel, Revelations of Ancient Wisdom. At the end of the show, we have an address that you can write to, as well as an email address, making underscore known at yahoo.com. And I thank you, and we will see you next time. Be well.